Tony Khan has broken his silence on his meeting at the airport with Shane McMahon. Shane already commented on this through Bully Ray on Busted Open Radio last week. Tony was asked about it during an appearance on ESPN Radio on Tuesday. He said, well, as I understand, he's not doing anything with WWE, and I had a really nice visit with him. I had heard from a lot of people that he was interested in talking, and it had become, frankly, a big media story to the point where I was getting asked on-the-record questions about it, and I answered them, and just like I'll answer you now. I had never met him in advance of my first conversation with him. There was a lot of buzz about this, so I thought it would certainly be worth talking, and I have a lot of respect for him. I had never met him, but he seemed like a really nice guy. I sat down with him, but he was fantastic. I really enjoyed talking to him, and he is a very smart person about wrestling, and I thought he was a great guy, and we have a lot of mutual friends, and we both happened to be in Dallas. A mutual friend linked us up, who was one of the bigger names in pro wrestling. Was it the learning tree? Because I think it was the learning tree. And that friend put us on a group chat. We were both in the same town at the same time. Somebody in the middle of talking at an airport conference room, somebody just busted in, I guess, and took a photo, but I think that's fine. Yes, I guess someone just randomly busted into the room and took their photo. What is this, the royal family? Got paparazzi all around them? Like he didn't want this out there. But fair play, there's nothing wrong with having a conversation. Maybe they can tape trade since they're both big wrestling fans. Just keep them off my television, please. Tony also tweeted his thanks to Mr. David Zaslav for having him in Paris for the Olympics for what he called the trip of a lifetime. He also said later about their media rights deal, right now is the most important time ever in AEW. We are on the verge of the most important deal we will ever make. I think now, over five years, it's really been building to this point where AEW is going to jump into the media rights and be a very profitable, successful company. He also tweeted about the most important announcements, plural, in AEW history, quote, looming large. I'll tell you what, if this deal he makes with Warner Brothers Discovery doesn't knock people's socks off for all this talk about how great of a deal it's going to be, because that's all he's been saying, is this going to be a great deal, it's going to be a wonderful deal, best deal ever. If it's not, he's going to have people all over him. But he's got people all over him every week, no matter what he says, so I guess it really doesn't uh, make that much of a difference. It's not going to be different than every other day. But it does feel like this is the home stretch, like this is finally reaching a boiling point. Maybe they want to wait and tie the announcement in with the Wembley show. Uh, I can't wait for him to announce something so I can stop talking about the announcement. Uh, Now, he's been negotiating with David Zaslav directly. David Zaslav is, of course, the head of Warner Brothers Discovery. He's on the hot seat right now for CNBC. Says that uh, Warner Brothers Discovery shares have plunged 70% in the last two years. Of course, you hear all these stories. He's been trying to cut costs. They're over $40 billion in debt still. He's been trying to cut costs left and right. Thousands of layoffs. They just lost the NBA rights. They filed suit against the league in court. Then their stock dropped 9% on Thursday alone after the company took a whopping $9 billion write-down given the loss of value in its linear cable network. So what that means is they concluded that their TV assets, so the TNTs and TBSs of the world, True TV, all all these network assets that they own are not worth nearly as much as they thought they did. And losing the NBA probably has a lot to do with that. Think of an upside-down mortgage, where the money you still owe on your home loan is more than what the actual house is worth. (laughs) Not good. But I think there's been a general acknowledgement that this was probably the case, especially as more people continue to leave TV behind for streaming. Uh, You know, again, their stock price, it's not like they just dropped this week. It's been going up, and all of a sudden it went down. It's been dropping for the better part of two years. This is more, more than anything else, I feel like it's more of a black eye. Uh, for them and for him. But Zaslav is the is the one that Tony Khan is directly negotiating with on a new deal. If anything were to happen with him, what effect might that have on AEW? Right? It's unlikely, I think, that anything would happen with him uh, before a deal gets made. 
So they should be okay, but like these are very volatile times for Warner. And if I'm Tony Khan, I want this deal done yesterday so I know my future is secure. It's like when they signed their first deal right before COVID hit. You, you wait a couple of more months and the world turns to shit. AEW is in a very different place than it is right now. Are they even on TV? Is there, is there even an AEW at this point? I mean, that's how big of a deal that was. As it turned out, wrestling was one of the only forms of entertainment that gave these networks first-run programming every single week during all the shutdowns. So it proved to be very valuable, you know, as a television property. But they didn't know that. They, they wouldn't have known that in March of 2020. There's no way they signed that deal if they waited an extra month or two or three months. There's no way that Warner Brothers Discovery signs them to the deal that they did. So they got very lucky. All the more reason to get that announcement in these next few weeks, because if they hit a snag and things get dragged out even longer, there are external factors at play here that are out of Tony Khan's control. So AEW needs that deal now. And they need to come back with a better show on Wednesday than the one they gave us this week, because Dynamite this week was largely a bore. Predictably, I got about half a dozen messages from the sickos as Tony Khan calls them, telling me to stop covering AEW because I, you didn't like this week's show. I should stop watching the product because I didn't like this week's show. You know, it's funny. When I praise the shows, I don't hear a goddamn thing from these people. Only when I don't like the show or I say bad things about it that they disagree with, they pout like a girl that just got stood up at the prom. I know there were travel issues. All the key players made it who had to be there. MJF had to drive 10 and a half hours to get there for his match with Kyle Fletcher, which was very good. Brian Danielson and Jeff Jarrett, they had a fun little brawl in the main event. But that show did not have me feeling that we were only two weeks away from what should be their biggest show of the year. They need to crank that energy up this week. 